Good morning to you. Welcome to business. Now, from this morning, passengers uh, would be paying 10% more in transport fares to their various destinations. Now, this follows the decision by government to approve this margin of increase in fares for the various driver unions last week. But how would this impact on incomes and the cost of living? The following analysis explores the impact of businesses on businesses and individuals. The proposed adjustment would affect all categories of transport services by the various driver unions in the country, like intracity buses, popularly known as Trotro, intercity long buses, and shared taxis. So if you patronize a shared taxi to work, which is costing you about 5 CDs, 40 pesos, you now are required to pay 6 CDs. This will translate into 30 CDs for the week. For the intercity buses, popularly known as Trotro, if you were paying 3 CDs, 50 pesos to work, you would now be paying 3 CDs 90 pesos. So if you were spending about 17 CDs every week, your budget now stands at 20 CDs, translating into about 80 CDs a month. With this development, if there isn't any adjustment in your salary to make up for this increase, then there has to be some expenditure cuts to help deal with this challenge. This would obviously lead to marginal increase in the cost of living going up on the basis that other actors in the economy don't increase their prices as a result of this development. For some industries and businesses, it might be difficult to absorb this increase in transport fares which would lead to cost of production going up a development that will result in them passing on that cost to the consumer now the securities and exchange commission sec has indicated it could soon join the bank of ghana to take some actions against gold buying firm men's gold this follows fresh revelations that the company's dealings could be likened to derivatives trading which requires approval from the Securities and Exchange Commission. There's more on what the capital markets regulator had to say on this development in the following report. The Minerals Commission and Lands Commission have all told Joy Business that the license given to men's gold only allows them to buy and export gold. However, checks by Joy Business indicates the company might be engaged in some sort of derivative trading which should be licensed by the Capital Market Regulator, the Security and Exchange Commission. But its Director General, Reverend Daniel Lugbami, says it has not given the company its blessings. No, no, no. Men's gold doesn't have a license uh, from SEC. And I think we have put out a notice to that effect because we had some people uh, asking about men's gold and we did say that they don't have a license from SEC. Uh, they have a license from I believe Minerals Commission. I don't think they have um, a license from the central bank but as I can tell you that SEC hasn't issued any license to uh, men's gold and um, I, I also know that the, the operations are being uh, looked at, and I believe at the right time, the necessary directives will be, will be given. Now, this development could spell trouble for the firm, but Men's Good, on the other hand, has insisted that they are not taking deposits as it's being put out by the Bank of Ghana. Persons close to the company have maintained since Bank of Ghana gave the public warning, they have tried several times to engage Central Bank to get the issue resolved, but there has not been any response from the regulator. All right, so we'll be certainly be updating you on this development in our subsequent bulletins. That's it on business this morning. My name is Imano Abwaji Riafi. Have a good morning.